We are the Gators. So, you guys are my kid Gators. This morning we're going to have so much fun learning about living and non-living organisms. Can you think of something that's living? Do you know what living means? We're going to find out today. Which one of these pictures is living? Do any of you know? Very good. A chicken. A chicken is living. Why do you why do you think it's living? What makes you come to that conclusion? Yes, it's an animal. Who what are characteristics of animals that make them living? And so if the chicken is living, then our basketball is what? Very good, non-living. Okay, so we are going to discuss living and non-living today. So today, we will be learning about living and non-living, but I have a question for you. And after I ask it, I want you to stop your video for about a minute or two, because I really want you to think about this one, like really think about it, okay? I had an egg, I got it on my farm. The egg has been fertilized. Would the egg be living or non-living? You can pause your videos now and we'll return in just a minute. Okay, so you've had time to think about it. A fertilized egg, what would be inside of a fertilized egg? Not when you buy the grocery store, a fertilized egg. I had one with me this morning, and guess what? Miss Ted dropped it on the way here. We're all human, we make mistakes. That's how we learn. Inside of a fertilized egg would be a chick. So while the egg shell is non-living, the inside of the egg would be living. Pretty interesting stuff, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you a few pictures. I want to see what you know before we read our book this morning. Um, Jane, can you tell me if a fish, a clownfish, is he living or not living? Very good, he's living. What about a cow? <gasps> right again. Living. A flower. Definitely living, yes. What about a baby doll? She looks real. Is she living or not living? Right, she is not living. Does she breathe? No. Can she move by herself? No, but she can move, right? Yeah, when you move her, okay? Um, a ball. A ball moves, but is it living? No, it's not. A tree? What do you think? Very good. It's living. And last but not least, a robot. A robot can move. He can obviously get around if he wants to. Is he living or non living? He would be non living. All right, meet me on the carpet. We are fixing to have some fun. Okay, so we're going to read a book about living and non-living things. It is by Kevin Kurtz, and we're going to learn about characteristics that make things living or non-living. Do you know what a characteristic is? Everybody has, everything has a characteristic, right? Very good. 
Okay, yes. Everything has characteristics or traits. So let's go over, let's read our book and see what we think. Everywhere you go, you will see living things. Wow, look, that's a pretty swamp right there. I, what is this? A polar bear, yes. Tree. Very nice. Everywhere you go, you will see non-living things. What are some non-living things you see in this room? Very good, a chair. Yes, a chair, a desk. Tables. You guys are so smart. Okay? But what makes them not live? That's what we have to find out. There's a rock. This is made of rock. Snowman! Oh, how fun! I wish we had more snow in South Georgia so we could play with snowmen, don't you? Absolutely. Living things. I see a cactus. Oh, look, there is a bird and also a jet plane. They both fly. Are they both living? Why? That's what we have to find out. Why is one living and not living? only things that move? Can you think of something else that will move that's not living? Very good, a car. What else? You're right, you got here on a bus this morning, absolutely. Um, what's something else? Can you think of anything else that cannot? that may be non-living? Yeah, we just talked about that. A baby doll, yeah, you can make it move, right? But does it move by itself? Hope not. <laughs> not necessarily. Some non-living things do move. While well, some living things cannot move. Can a mushroom move? Sea coral? A palm tree, can it move? Can it grow legs and move from one location to the other? What else can you think of that is live that cannot move? Very good. We're going to find out. Are living things the only things that grow and change? Can things that are non-living grow and change? What about the butterfly? Is it living or non-living? Yes, it's living. And you know what? It also changes, doesn't it? It changes from a chrysalis to a butterfly. All living things grow and change. All living things. But some non-living things grow and change too. Look at the glaciers in this book. See how it started very small? And it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. What do you think makes that happen? Yes. Are living things the only things that reproduce? What does reproduce mean? Yeah, have babies, that's right. 
or seeds or or do only living things make babies or copies of themselves or seeds or do they all fly yes this is these are the things we're going to talk about today some non-living things can also make copies of themselves look at the fire what does fire need it does need air yes but is it living Okay, and although most all living things can reproduce, some living things like mules and male tigers cannot. Yeah, so what do you, what are your thoughts on that? Do men reproduce? Right, very good. We're going to talk about all of this today. Are living things the only things that need food? That need water and breathe oxygen? Very good. All living things do need energy. They need nutrients. They need water to exist. And many of them also need to breathe oxygen to exist. But some non-living things also need food and oxygen to exist. What do you think food for fire is? Yes, wood. Very good. And non-living things, can, some non-living things, cannot exist without always getting water from their environment. Okay, so you see how the water runs through the river, but it has to have water, right? It has to have no water source. And some living things like these microbes are poisoned by oxygen. So if oxygen hits them, they're poisoned. They breathe other things like sulfur and even iron. So how are living things different from non-living? Do you guys have any ideas? Right, they don't have to eat mostly, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, so not even a scientist, a really smart scientist that's been doing this for so long knows for sure, but there's not a perfect answer. But if something does all of these things, they have to do all, then it is probably a living thing. They must breathe, drink water, take energy and nutrients from the environment, reproduce, grow, and change. They must do all of those things. So, we are gonna chart our living and non-living things, the characteristics of those, okay? I wanna see what you learned. All right. Let's get us a sharpie here. The next one, I'm sorry. So if I were to write living things, I think Anything else? 
what's another characteristic of a living thing? things can they move things reproduce? Some do, but for the most part. <coughs> Excuse me. Anything else? Do they grow? How tall can this um, air purifier grow. It can, right. So we're going to put it, cannot grow. You guys are wonderful at this. You're very, very good. Alright, anything else you can think of for a non-living thing? So what we're going to do when we divide into groups, we are going to have one group. Wait, first I need to ask you a question. Is water living or non-living? It can move. Can it breathe? No. Can it grow? No. Can it reproduce? So we know water is not living, right? Very good. So on my way this morning, I stopped and got some pond water. We are going to have a section where you guys are going to observe pond water with a magnifying glass. I want you to see what you see inside the water, okay? Because we know water is non living. But can things be inside the water? I don't know. 
And also, with me, we are going to do a worksheet. Okay, so before we break up into groups, we're going to have one, two, three, four groups or so. All right, so at group one, you are going to have cards just like these with multiple living or non-living things on them. What I want you to do is pair the living and the non-living. So you're going to put all of your living in one section, all of your non-living in one section. And we're going to walk around, Miss Gabby and I, and we're going to check to make sure that those are correct, okay? Um, at the second section, we're going to have a whole bunch of things in a box, including minerals like graphite, You'll be able to look at these through a magnifying glass. However, we know a rock is not living, right? But you're going to divide, you're going to choose one and put it in your non-living section, okay? Um, at the third section, and before you go to the third section, Remember, we always get our safety equipment. We can't go anywhere with our glasses because I do not want pond water to splop into, or splash up into your eyes because you're going to take a dropper. You're going to get a little bit of pond water. You're going to put it in a vial and you are going to absorb but you must have your safety equipment. And in my group, when you come see me, we are gonna create a book. You are gonna draw and any item, any two actually, I'm gonna have you split it. I want you to draw one living, one non-living. You're gonna color it. And then we're gonna, we're gonna decide is it living or non-living? You're going to have to answer. Does it move? Does it grow and change? Does it breathe? Does it make more of itself just like itself? Does it reproduce? Does it need food and water to live? So if it needs all of those things, and it is what? Living. Very good. Okay? So we are going to break up into groups now. And then we're going to meet back together. And I'm going to ask you some really hard questions. Because you guys are super smart scientists. So, welcome back to our discussion group, kindergartners. And y'all know what? We've got some. Y'all know what's really living around here in the swamp? Yes, us, gators. You guys are great. Okay, does anybody have any questions you can think of about living and non-living things? Anything at all? Very good. Yes, absolutely. Right, living things breathe. Very good. Do you want to share anything? Is there anything in your environment you can think of that might be a challenge for the others to figure out? If so, you can come up here and act it out for us. Let us try to figure it out. No? Okay. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to let you think about that. And then we will, at the end of the day, Play a little trains because we're going to play Simon Says too. If I say, everybody stand up. Very good. Now, Simon Says, touch your head if an ant is a living thing. Touch your toes if a rock is living. I didn't catch anybody, did I? Okay. And we will be playing that a lot in the next couple of days, all right? But when you return to your desk, Miss Gabby has passed out a white sheet of paper. You're going to draw one living and one non-living thing. 
and you're going to tell me why it's living or not living. Now remember, we have outlined the characteristics. You can use that to put your answers down, okay? But here's a challenge. I hope some of you get this. When you get done with that, you're going to flip it over on back. And I want you to think of a thing that is non-living or that lived long ago, but does not live now. Yes, Michael, like a dinosaur. But here's your challenge. I want you to tell me what it would look like now. You're gonna draw that. And I want you to tell me, would it be living or not living these days because of the environmental change and why? Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how people affect living and non-living things. So be thinking about that as well. Now, before I release you to go to your seats, and remember now, that's a challenge. I, want, I just want to see you guys, if you can do it. There are so many things you can research too. You can use both of our charts. And remember, today we did the GSC standard SKL1A. We had to obtain, evaluate, and communicate about how organisms alive and not alive and non-living objects are grouped, which is what we did when we outlined our characteristics, okay? If you have any questions while you're at your seats, if you wanna share something, if you just want me to come by, raise your hand. Now, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up if um, a gator is alive. Good! Now, you may walk back to your seats with marshmallow feet. Thank you guys, and I'm coming around in just a minute, so be really thinking about your challenge.